SpaceX is reaching considerable success in Stage 0, which is a complex for the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship. Specifically, the launch tower with its Mechazilla system took only 13 months from design to build. Just 13 months to finish a 145 meter high tower. It must be said then that this is extremely impressive progress. With the Mechazilla launch tower, SpaceX is completely one-upping NASA. All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. First, let's talk about the SpaceX Mechazilla. This is the giant robotic launch and landing tower that will be literally catching Starship rockets out of the air with chopstick arms sometime in the not so distant future. It was an unprecedented and fantastical idea from Elon Musk and the SpaceX engineers, but this isn't about showing off, this is a purely functional decision for the company. The buildup of the launch site in South Texas has been extraordinary. SpaceX started assembling it less than nine months ago, beginning with the Starship QD arm around May of 2021. SpaceX began installing the two main Mechazilla arms in October of 2021, three months after assembly began. Just three months after that, all three have come together for the first time to lift and stack the world's largest rocket. Of course, it still requires a legislative process, namely an environmental assessment from the FAA to complete before approval for launches can take place, which Musk believes may take another two months. Besides that, SpaceX is heading to construct another tower at the Starbase Orbital Launch Site. But such plans are expected to be at the mercy of the final PEA's outcome, which is why SpaceX has backup options. On December 3rd, Musk revealed via Twitter that the company has started building a pad for Starship at Launch Complex 39A, part of NASA's Kennedy Space Center near Cape Canaveral, Florida. SpaceX began some preliminary Starship-related work at Pad 39A in the fall of 2019, but halted it relatively quickly as operations ramped up at Starbase. But now, the company is continuing to gear up to start launching its massive Starship Mars rocket from Florida. SpaceX chose to entirely scrap the unfinished launch mount it had built, clearing the site for the construction of a new and improved version of Starbase's orbital launch site. He added, 39A is hallowed spaceflight ground, no place more deserving of a Starship launch pad. We'll have similar but improved ground systems and tower to Starbase. Less than two weeks after that, NASA has revealed the company's plans for an entirely different Starship launch site just a few miles to the north known as Launch Complex 49, or LC-49. On December 18th, Musk said on Twitter that Cape is hopefully this summer. And during the February 10th presentation, Musk once again presented about the launch capacity of the enormous Starship at Florida's Cape Canaveral. As Musk said, Starbase is more suited to become their advanced R&D location, where they would try out new designs and new versions of the rocket, and the Kennedy Space Center would be their main operational launch site. So, in the worst case scenario, they would be delayed for 6 to 8 months to build up the Cape Launch Tower and launch from there. But what's interesting is that Starbase and KSC won't be the only Starship launch sites. SpaceX is turning two former deep water oil rigs into offshore launch platforms known as Phobos and Deimos, named after the two moons of Mars. And the company aims to have full launch capability on one of the platforms as well as at Starbase and KSC by the end of the year. In short, SpaceX is doing quite well for Stage 0, especially with the construction of launch sites, preparing for the first orbital flight as well as subsequent series of flights to conquer deep space. At this rate, SpaceX has completely one-upped NASA. Much has already been said and written about the first mobile launch tower built for the SLS rocket. The massive rolling mobile launcher 1 supports the 108 meter tall SLS rocket, providing access to the Orion spacecraft and supplying power, communications, coolant, and fuel to the rocket. Over a decade, NASA has spent about $1 billion to build, redesign, and then complete the structure under a cost-plus contract. Now, as early as next month, this launch tower will be put to the test as it rolls the SLS rocket to a launch pad at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and the booster is fueled during what is known as a wet dress rehearsal. At that point, we'll know whether the tower works or not. 
But even though NASA has not yet launched the SLS rocket or shown its capabilities, Congress has already been insistent that the agency develop a larger and more capable version. This Block 1B version of the SLS will have a larger and more powerful upper stage. And since this can't be accommodated by the Mobile Launcher 1, a new launch tower is required. That's right, NASA is going to spend $1 billion for some launch infrastructure, Mobile Launcher 1, that may be used just two or three times. Earlier, Bechtel National of Reston, Virginia won this contract to design and build the second larger Mobile Launcher for $383 million by March of 2023. In late January, during a meeting of NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, one of its members provided an update on Mobile Launcher 2. My name is Dr. George Neald. I'm the Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation at the FAA. We have a twofold statutory mission. First of all, to ensure public safety during commercial launch and reentry activities. And secondly, to encourage, facilitate, and promote commercial space transportation. The 90% design, review, and fabrication drawings for the large structure are behind schedule. Mobile Launcher 2 has encountered some challenges, Neil said. The selected contractor, Bechtel, has experienced some performance issues associated with underestimating the complexity of the project and some supplier-related issues as well as COVID. As a result, Neil said, NASA has issued a second letter of concern to Bechtel requesting an assessment of project risks and impediments, plus a corrective action plan as well as an identification of opportunities to reduce costs and mitigate scheduled disruptions while improving efficiency. All of these issues should get some more clarity later this year as NASA's Office of Inspector General has said it is looking into the development of Mobile Launcher 2. However, to be honest, no one who matters really cares if there are delays at this point, because after all, the Block 1B version of the SLS rocket is years away from launch. Boeing is developing the rocket's exploration upper stage, and that project is unlikely to be completed before the mid-2020s. And during a recent presentation to the agency's advisory committee, NASA's exploration officials said they would not need the Block 1B version of the SLS rocket until the Artemis 4 mission to the moon, which probably will not launch before 2027 or 28. The dates for such a mission are so notional that NASA did not even include them on its chart. So if the Mobile Launcher 2 is a few years late and a few hundred million dollars over budget, it probably doesn't matter to NASA's leadership, even if it should. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to share your ideas in the comments as well, because everyone's support motivates us to continue creating more quality content. And if you enjoyed today's content, please give us a thumbs up. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.